Welcome to the season of the sun, the Leo season, sacred spirit circle meditation. The season of the heart. I like to say that the sun shines upon everything that it touches, shining light upon it. So the sun is connected to our heart center and the heart center is probably, I would say, our prime directive where we are to shine our light on this spiritual walk of fame for all the world to see. The beings in the seen and the unseen, the animals, the wet amaze, I mean, all of the stuff, the plant beings and so much more. But our heart center, what does your heart love in creating sacred space around what your heart loves? Loving ourselves beyond the divine poor, universal streams. It's our fourth energetic center or chakra. I like calling them energetic centers myself, but it connects us to all dimensions involving relationships. A lot of health, monetary. Ooh, listening to myself as per usual. But with that, inshallah and ashe, divine wills, blessings to you and for you as always. Just saying that out loud. So who's who's really ready to take my show beyond the 777, spirit to spirit to spirit? Are literally, are we going to hit the divine portal? the gatekeepers, the great spirit, and your higher self spirit? Or are we going to take it beyond the elven wishing tree, the elves, helping us steward out for the universe? Grateful that you all showed up and showed me the cosmic love, quality over quantity. So go ahead, share the excitement with your friends, hit that white rabbit. It truly is the only way to elevate and guarantee that we all get the nutritional quotient, the subtle energy that our soul deserves, possibly desires. Now that we have entered the season of the sun, I love saying that the sun touches everything that it shines upon, even the element of fire in the Chinese astrology, the sun, fire, yang fire, the big sun. It was a balmy 102 in my village yesterday. It was a tidal wave of heat. So the Leo season is really kicking off our heart, the star that we are in the palace. So your heart is your heart, you know. What is it shining upon? The house that Leo rules the cusp of. My heart shines upon spirit, a conduit for the world of spirit. That's where the mystic messenger comes in, channeling the origins, the elemental sometimes, and more. So we have the Archangel Raziel, the prism of the rainbow. If you feel if you feel like calling on Raziel, I will have the link in the show notes for an episode I did all about that Archangel for the season of Leo. But being that we are kicking off our heart center, our relational channel, relational empathy, if you haven't tuned into the Leo Sacred Spirit Circle Meditation, be sure to dive in because I talk about just the heart center when it activates and I talk about relational empathy. I believe I talk about the thymus and the shaman's portal. Don't quote me on that though. The season of Leo is all about our heart, our heart center, becoming heart centric, uh, beaconing our light to shine brighter and bigger our internal love story, the love story we share out into the world, the greatest love of all time out into the world. And we also have Venus, our heart opener, off on holiday, which really adds to the brilliance of the sun. And we are on the precipice of a life-altering, life-changing course correction strategy in a way during the season of the sun. So remember, again, the song, we had joy, we had fun. I have it open. <laughs> we had seasons in the sun. Talks about other stuff. However, it's a time to be heart-centric and loving ourselves for who we are and also for the road, the journey we have traveled, knowing you are safe, you are shining, you are brilliant. So really taking a breath and a pause and really imagine your inner self, your inner world just with you. And if you are able to pursue those heartfelt dreams and wishes and being passionate and having passion for whatever lights up your heart, whatever blows your skirt up, the star that you are, without any concerns, doubts, worries, fears, you know, entanglements that get in the way. I've literally been seeing energy markers on my auric field and I'm scrubbing those things. So whoever put them out there, just know they're 
those things are flipping back at you. Godspeed. But our ability to really live out our dreams begins within ourselves. Feeling safe and secure, which we just kind of tidied up the loose ends of our feelings. So feeling worthy, feeling safe, feeling at home, feeling embodied, or even just being embodied, feeling superb, fantastic, my new word. So ask your heart how your heart wishes to feel and use words like, I know, I know my heart feels this way, or I know my heart feels that way. So with that, my name is Tanya D. If you're new to my show, welcome to my audio medicine room or my virtual one. And if you have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do heartfelt. Do it through the heart. Go ahead and hit that white button, the white rabbit here on YouTube. Tanya D, where you're tuning in. And my Musing with Tanya D podcast, The Season of the Witches. Subscribed yet? So the heart, the heart center, the love channel, the relational empathy Literally, have you tuned into the Leo Sacred Spirit Circle Meditation? What is your divine love story? How you love yourself is how the world outside of you loves you and your authenticity. It really is the divine pour. And again, before I muse on further, you know I'm going to do this. Once again, let's give a shout out to the village, the tribe, growing, excelling, gratitude and blessings, new peeps, arriving to the show, entering the community subscribers. I do see you. I just love to give a validation, a voice of acknowledgement, gratitude, blessing, and thanks. I, I like to do the overpour of paying it forward. New friends and guests, welcome welcome to the show. I truly am magnetizing, monetizing. I'm going from the feeling state into a love field of angelic subscribers for my show, The Love Channel, my channel, Leo Season. So what's the heart loves? What does your heart love? It really is like the rising sun. Imagination. For me, hitting those angelic numbers of subscribers. A loving feeling. The elves. I'm into elves lately. Elvins, contombles, wetames, the gins, the genies. I am all about options. But the elves, stay curious. Maybe, maybe we hit the goal story. Creating a village of musers in angel numbers. Are you in? If so, go ahead and share with your friends, like-minded musers, groups, and whatnot in the village. It really does take a tribe beyond like-mindedness to really choreograph the stage. Change the way you see the world and the world around you changes. So let's give a shout out to those of you that have been part of my journey since the very beginning and also those that do tune in on your own timeline and watch the replay. I am very aware of that as well. And again, blessings, Ashe, to you and always for you. Thank you for that. And just remember a comment if you do feel like you need a message for your day to get you on your way. I know I do do weekly messages, but sharing is just another way to really pay it forward. You can also find me on other social channels, TikTok. I do need the numbers. I got to get up to a thousand so I can go live. I really want to throw the bones, the shelves, doing mini divinations. My heart really would love to do that to give you insight into cowrie show divinations. YouTube shorts, you can find me there, reels and whatnot. But again, thanks for sharing, saving, loving, <laughs> loving my reels, by the way. Um, a lot of you just saving them. Thank you for that. Just remember, I am your other really shamanic reflecting assistant. You truly are your own healer. But sometimes we need another worldly life coach assistant myself included, to get us out of our own magical way so that our star shines brighter. Starlight, right? The Daily Snippet. So what do I muse about? Well, the cosmic insights, the planets doing their elemental dance out into the sky. And by design, I do follow the moon through the energies of each of the seasons and the gates. It's a very different flavor. I just want to say that. But Leo season is our heart center. It connects to the shaman's portal through the thymus, mystical empathy. Go ahead and take my Change Your Stars quiz to find out your intuitive gift order or psychic abilities. We usually have more than one, more, more than not. They're mostly kinesthetic gifts. There's more kinesthetic gifts. You know, we've got two visions. We've got our hearing sister, but kinesthetic, you know. It's not just emotional empathy. And sometimes I get all, I get all, I don't even know what I get, but there is more than just emotional empathy. It just kind of makes me smile. Uh, there's mental empathy. There is physical empathy, pain body stuff. There's so much, but there's more than what meets the eye, I guess. Uh, the four elements of 
astrology, the four pillars. I talk about the elemental realms, the energies, and the pathways, add the meridians. But again, as a reflector, I'm always asking myself, is this the right time, the right place? And am I with the right people in the right time and place? Or what am I seeing that nobody else can see, which is a reflector's galactic QG. QG, <laughs> that's a new word. So what's the movement that I am creating? And I'm always looking for the solution. What's the solution I'm creating within the movement, within my flow? So if you are curious how you too can use the elementals on and off grid, you can still activate the rising of the origins portal to really inspire, open your eyes to a different perspective that you may not have seen the, the elemental realm. But organically, the key is always trusting our intuition. And again, take my quiz, change your stars, if you are curious about your intuitive gifts and your psychic abilities. Some of them might just be otherworldly. They might be off-grid. Out-of-body energy centers really light up a different way. Cleansing the auric field, the etheric body, the etheric highway. I do, again, follow the moon as a reflector through the astrology, the gates in human design, and the seasons. It's a whole different platform. Journaling with the moon. Morning pages. But now that our heart is online, the heart activates during, or it starts around age four and a half to six and a half. But our heart, our heart is online along with the shaman's portal and the thymus. They're connected. They're all connected, actually. But we connect to and through the shaman's portal through our heart and the thymus. And the thymus, more on that kind of later, the thymus. But the heart is the center of love and relationships. It's our relational channel. Love is the energy behind creation, spirituality, and every realm of the universe, the multiverse, and our ability to utilize our heart center. Being connected. We are one. We are connected. Just say that. It's equal to our potential for personal power, the power of love, the divine subscription. Subscribing to the laws of the universe, those channels. Love is the relational channel between all channels of communication. Imagine that. Just tune into that. Living and non-living of the world and not of the world. In and of. Not of and in. Or both, actually. But love is the language. It's That's the one we use to choreograph all the languages within. Light language, even. So tune into my upcoming... Uh, full moon. I'm just saying that out loud. I'm going to be doing some light language in that one this time. So I'm stoked. As we navigate the stage, the playing field of what our heart loves to create what romances our heart. Romances are stone, you know. The stones are 10th uh, energy field connecting to the stones in our bones. Mineral, if you're a mineral clan. What creativity is installed? So wherever Leo is in your chart, that is where your heart center shines or it shines upon. The brightest, the most brilliant. It kind of activates, it's kind of a wishing well and a wishing tree, but it has some flavors added to it as well. So a lot, you know, there's a lot that goes into our heart chambers, the high heart, the middle heart, the low heart. The heart of the heart, the physicality. So take the world by your heart, bridging the gap so you aren't too open or too closed off. It really is about being just right. So, so you are just right, allowing the right amount of love to stream in. Personal streams, universal streams. You know, I like using the harmonics of Egyptian lime green. That's what I see that as, is lime, citrine, green, but also pink, pink and gold. Give yourself the right amount of time, the right amount of space to really set boundaries, choreographing boundaries that are in alignment for you, ones that really resonate with what your heart Build what your heart senses and allowing in the right amount of love, the amount that creates the love, protecting your heart center. You know, it's the triple warmer. It's the heart protector. You know, the heart has, even in the Chinese astrology, you know, there's fire is the heart, the small intestine, the triple warmer and the heart protector. You know, we, our heart needs that literally protecting our heart filled from any and all the things that does not create divine love. So really paying attention, pen to paper, to your personal love chalice. Where could you open up more? Where could you draw the lines, pull up the drawbridge, leave the gap, if you will? 
So it's important to really connect and protect our heart space, find areas that need to be fluid, areas that need to be drawn, open up to areas that need some love. You know, it's not about the needy and the clingy. I listened to Joe Dispenza yesterday about being clingy, needy and clingy. Just the right amount, right? Like a dash of sugar. So with that, just a few announcements uh, on the menu. Uh, the Rising of the Origins, again, I did leave that portal open. Sorry, I've got my little gizmo over here. I forgot to move screens. That's what you love about me. <laughs> just saying. Oh, gosh. So here we are. The Rising of the Origins. Oh, and I didn't even move that. Um, but anyway, I left this open. The replays are in the portal. You can activate your portal. There are also some other gifts in there too. A great meditation. If you're ready to really connect with your gift and your purpose, your personal medicine and element or an elemental being and so much more. And I do have a new podcast episode out, which this is Justin. Justin with two N's, Parkinson. Live, L-I-V-E. There's a metaphor for that. Better through conscious and subconscious connections. The season of the witches series, which I'm loving, by the way. This is a great interview. I hope you do tune in. Uh, tag tag myself or Justin as you tune in, as always. And also, calorie shell divinations. I'm stoked about this. I do them through Zoom. If you don't live in Salt Lake City, Utah, I offer them online. But they're just one-on-one -on -one sessions. Connecting you to your magic, your medicine, your personal medicine. I do do ritual, prescription rituals as your medicine. So if your soul is at a crossroads along with online offerings I also have, be sure to connect into the elemental and the subtle. But I'm also going to be doing in-person divinations at Crohn's Hollow on Thursdays, noon to 4 p.m. Those slots are very limited, by the way. Uh, so I'm stoked about that. So be sure to tune in there. I am going to be at Crohn's Hollow again with Gift and Purpose, September 30th. So go ahead and mark your calendar for that. And then the Energy Body Demystified. I um, This was actually, this is a venue about really connecting your own personal healing journey, healing of the self. Uh, you kind of have to have a foundation with all the things. So it's kind of scrubbing the fields. But from here, we go into Change Your Stars, which if you've been tuning in, you know there's an opportunity there. And Change Your Stars is about harnessing the power of our own gift and purpose, our intuition. The title comes from A Knight's Tell, if you're new to my show and haven't heard me say that. I just, I really love when the dad says, you can change your stars. I believe we can all change our story. I really do. And it's time to really ignite the star that we are. And then from there, we go into Uncover Secrets of the Other World which is phenomenal. This one I started, um, I started probably right after that. And then I also did Voices of the Other World. They, they kind of go together, but in this one, I dive into my near-death experience, my story from my point of view. The people that witnessed that experience had a different, <laughs> totally different experience. But I was initiated early on, fire elementals and energies. That's what really drove me to Elder Maladoma Somme, um, Gift and Purpose. The universe never, you know, I get, I get witchery images, I should say, the prophetic. Um, and, because I haven't talked about it, the Shamanic Killing Academy for witches, wizards, seers, and reflectors, of course. The academy is open. It's always been open. Um, I had somebody reach out and ask me how they could work with me one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, I don't have that image, but uh, the Shamanic Killing Academy is definitely a great place to start and work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And you're going to find that other people in the academy actually are similar by divine. We all are kind of particles and waves and time space that are a collective, really, right? So with that, the elemental highway. Here, let's get rid of that backdrop, though. Okay, on the elemental highway, we've got a yin water goat of a day, a guai way. Two goats, greatest of all time. Look at all that. Have you noticed? Our entire, not including the hour, I don't bring in the hour, but we have a yin water goat of a day. The earth is dry. It's so dry. It's dry. It's parched. Did you notice? It's parched. We do have water in the heavenly realms there. The heavens, however, we're parched. We're, we're dry. That wood is burning, innovative. It's eccentric. 
um, no wet earth. And we're full of yin energy. So we're definitely, this is all happening inside of us. It's yin is inside of us, yin energy. So we definitely, we need metal. We have no metal. And metal is what is birthed from the earth is metal. Metal births, or the earth births metal, and then metal is a resource for water. We don't have any resources. So this, if this was a client, you're a self-made person. You create of your own free will. Nobody, nobody helps you out, just so you know. But we definitely need metal. Metal to bring out our courage. Metal to refine our skills. All that yin earth to a water day is ambition, authority, it's power. That's unyielding. It's absorbing our gift. So we're we're kind of dry. We're scratchy. Fire is wealth to a water day in the goat month. The wealth, it's hidden, but it is there. We can get to it. Just because something isn't is under the currents doesn't mean it's not available. And fire is something that we create, or wealth is something we create through through what we do. Uh, water nourishes the wood, see? So we've got performance, we have creativity, it's something innovative, it's probably something radical, something new. Uh, the rabbit and the yin wood in storage. That's what's bringing that out. So we take our flow, our intuitive insights, our curious nature, and we perform in, in innovative ways. But we definitely don't need any more fire because we have plenty of dry soil. We've got a lot of earth there. We need flour. This is about, not competition, uh, contemplation, compassion kind of comes to mind. Kindness, inner peace, those kinds of things. But metal and minerals, scribing, signs, scribing with sigils, scrying in the water, seeing signs in the water. Which brings me to our daily insights or messages. So for today, I went with um, the creators, <laughs> just so you know. Oh, prosperity. Prosperities, sisters, our happiness and joy. I like the sigils on this though, right? In a circle, a sacred circle, we've got um, boundaries, protection, sacred space. Holy Communion, Spirit, Love. I'll take it. But the 36, 369, not sure you can see the number on the bottom of that card, but it's opening up our heart to believe in the actions that we are taking or initiating. So it's like, have we created sacred space about filling into our heart, acting on beliefs of our heart, beliefs, you know, belief something, something that we can open up to. And finding joy in our community, taking time to smell the flowers, the roses, the little things, the fine things, finding help along the way, putting people above profit. This kind of reminds me of the journeyman in the Fae, <laughs> just saying. There's a message here that there's a need to collaborate. So be careful that we're not trying to build our dreams from a negative state. Struggling to find the prosperity, limiting limited thoughts, scarcity thinking, not allowing others in, you know, it's about balancing those threads. It's about the village, the tribe, the sisters, the brothers, the siblings. It's about the seen, the unseen. Are we tapping into it? Have we found our place? Are we in support? Is our community supportive? Do we got a village of like-minded explorers? Are we having to face, like face-to-face -face interactions with souls that make us better than who we are and with people who really help us share our gifts? Finding a community of cheerleaders. I like to cheer people on. My son's friend just announced his um, construction company. I am so excited. You know, it's really great to see these young kids stepping out and seeing how far they've come and like diving into you know their their medicine you know it's time that we help lift people up and launch ourselves out so right now just doubling up on our exposure to other people's positivity online and even in person you know it's going to quadruple our results so you may be underestimating the power of connection on the journey just do it for the friendships do it do it for the experience the experimentation, the experience, 
take logic out of the equation. What? Yeah, take logic out and just do it for the sheer joy of just being with high vibrational people. Go deeper with others. Risk, risk cracking wide open, cracking like the crack on and allowing some of your hidden brilliance to really escape into the realm. Your light, true prosperity comes with happiness, joy, health, wealth. I would say the joy molecules, love, inner peace, and really go ahead and add your own non-negotiables there. That's kind of what I just did. So it's time to stay rooted in communion, happiness, joy, be rooted while we are taking the steps to build our dreams. So are you running after an abundance of wealth and financial success without paying as much attention to the other sisters, the village, the community? How can you let go of any success shame you're feeling? You know, sometimes that happens. And sometimes, you know, people see us as successful. I don't feel successful, but I'm seen as a success. It's kind of interesting and curious. So how can you remember that it's totally okay to be exactly where you are right now in this moment financially? Hello, I know all about that too. And happiness and joy are the keys to bridging and bringing our dream to life. So where can you add more of them into your day-to-day -day reality? How can you move your focus from what you don't have in order to focus on what you do have? I'm suggesting journaling away, by the way. I've been journaling every morning. And with that, I got to take a sit back here on my seat. Well, I guess I can just sit back here. That's fine. <laughs> just saying. All right. So now we're moving to Tuesday. Terrific Tuesday. And what do we have? Oh my gosh, my hat. We have create who you are becoming, which I love. The seven, create who you are becoming, right? So we're putting this out into the future. The seven, sacred heart space. So this is time to connect with our higher self, our spirit, disco space, if you will. It's a choice. It's the duality of right and wrong, choosing the path towards our future self, taking the reins, the horse, and leading the way. We are in charge, committing to one path, allowing spirit to deliver our dream. Maybe it's time that you rooted into your heart space. Maybe, maybe you're not making a right choice. Are there some unnecessary delays that are kind of playing into playing it safe? Maybe you're, you know, I'm seeing a horse. Maybe you're straddling two average paths instead of stepping into the extraordinary trail, needing to over control your future in a way, possibly, the future belongs to who you are becoming. As a multi-passionate, multi-talented, multi-creative being of infinite potential abundance, choosing who you want to be can feel overwhelming, especially if you've reached a fork in the road, a crossroads. So it's time to really make a choice that will allow you to grow into the most magical beauty, I would say the most magical version of you. But this is a message also about the movement that you're making as you chase your dreams and the person you become along the way. And here's, here's a juicy secret. The two are literally, they're divinely intrinsic intrinsically there you go linked connected so you may feel blocked until you take inspired action towards one goal you know it really is the baby steps it's time to move forward sacred creator that you are your decisive determined action will really be a way for you to define your desire to the universe the universe is always listening to us so it's, it really is, watch out for what you wish for. Run in the direction of your dreams. Be confident. Do it confidently. Be your own guide. And just unfold your own path. Know that by not deciding, you're making a choice to remain in the same spot. And if there is one universal truth of creating things, it is this. It's that in action is the exact opposite of where you were building. So make strides towards your dreams. Do so now. And what lesson did you need to experience in order to stand exactly where you're standing? You know, sometimes divine reflection is a thing. 
Has what you are working towards shifted, expanded along the way? Is there anything is there anything that you've been hiding or building that feels too small for your big secret self to explore for your future? Have you been making choices based on what's possible today instead of what's probable for tomorrow? Again, journal prompts. Journal. It's all about journaling. We, we need to spend more time journaling. I'm just getting comfortable here. So, yeah. And then on Wizardry Wednesday, this one was curious. I'm just saying that out loud. We got um, Creator Water. This actually tells me we need to go to the water. We need ritual. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. Ritual. Yeah, we need ritual. But so what is water? Water is fluid. Water shapeshifts. Water has so many forms. There's fire of the water, steam. There is water of the water. Imagine that. Streams inside of water streaming. Like a river. I guess they call those channels. There's names. Sorry, I can't think of it right now. But water. Water is connected to our emotions. Being in the flow. Being a conduit. Relying on our own intuition. It also governs sustenance. Water nurtures nature. It also nurtures us. It's 70% of the world, 70% of our bodies, possibly more. Germination of our ideas, conception, the womb. It lives in the realms of dreams, prophecy, intuition. The element of water is insightful, healing, cleansing, reconciling. So how can our intuition be of use to us right now? This is telling me we need to be a conduit. We need to connect sacred scrying in water. Yeah, connecting with water. And what happens when we allow it to restore our balance, restore our balance? How would our situation change if we fell, like fell fully into our emotions, like em embodying water, floating on water? How well are our emotions helping us right now, assisting us? And in what ways can they heal our situations? Are there places that love is hiding, waiting to be found? So kind of let's dive in a little deeper, diving into water. Water governs the watery depths of emotion and intuition. It's the moon. It's Pluto. It's, uh, oh, why did I just go to the depths? It's, yeah, Scorpio, the moon, Pluto, Neptune. Jeez, I almost said Jesus. Well, there I just did. So when you tune out all of the should do, could do, coulda, woulda, shouldas, and you throw logic and responsibility overboard what's left. Imagination. Imagine that you are in water. Maybe you're on a ship. Maybe you're on the beach. Uh, golly, like Philippines beach. Anybody ready to go to the Philippines? Or maybe you're a mermaid swimming in the depths of the ocean. I just watched Sirens on Hulu. Yeah, Hulu. Just tuning out everything except how you feel, embodying your emotions. And all you know is that your emotion is guiding you. And that any thoughts that come up or in for you are the direct result of your intuition. So what messages flow into your awareness? What emotional tones or tunes are coming in? It's time to immerse ourselves in water. I would say take a ritual bath. Anoint yourself, your third eye. You can use essential oils. You can use water, fresh water from a river, rain water, moon water. And just fill it opening up a little bit more as a result. Or dipping your hands in a bowl of water, cleansing them of any energy that's holding you back. And infusing them with the magic of water's healing powers. And when you're done... Have a tall glass of intuition and healing. Wait for it to really start working from within. Have you ever toned into water and then drank it? I think that's actually very cleansing for the inner body, actually. I'm just going with that. I do that too. <laughs> I do all kinds of funny things. Okay, tantalizing Thursday. Where are you? Shift, shift the way to new potential. And I love the sigil on this message. And how was last Friday for you all? Last Saturday, Friday, Saturday, 29, the moon, what we feel in Mars, what we act upon, negotiating 
with Chiron, our wound. Healing, this is healing, healing, healing the wounds around how we treat ourselves, how we allow the environment to treat us and how like it's self-treatment and how at the end of all this, do we feel about it? So is our heart loving it? Is the heart of the moment? Are we in our heart's integrity? Is everything aligned? Curious times indeed. So this is like light workers. It's time to be ignited. It's a shift in our consciousness, human evolution. It's the charisma of a powerful leader, the awareness of our thoughts, things coming into alignment with our highest purpose potential, our soul story, and covering the highest potentials. So this here is a message that there's a need for humanity, determination, tolerance, perseverance, showing patience, understanding, letting go of expectations, the outcomes, accepting new ways of thinking, having one foot in the old, one foot in the new, a need to really turn away from the naysayers. We are in a time of massive evolution. Old ways of thinking are being replaced by a new awareness. Luminous leaders with novel ways of being in the world are necessary at this time. So we're kind of basking. We're being called to lead with our gifts, our skills, our voice, our spirit, and, and to gracefully navigate these uncertain but yet very exciting times. Explore, express our calling, make the shift into living and breathing your purpose. It reminds me of fish. I don't know why I just saw fish. So if your soul feels restless, it's because the progress of the shift, your genius, your genie has been slower than necessary. Just know that your shift will be a catalyst for those who are witnessing your journey. So when we see other souls standing in their power, in their luminosity, illuminating their brilliance, we're reminded of who we are ourselves who we can be. So shift the way for us, light worker. That's what we're being called to do. Open up, be the light. Shift your focus from you to them and notice, notice what you can do for the greater good of those around you. Your best offering in the world really relies on solving a problem for others and also loving others in the end term on helping them shift. So it's time for us to boldly step into a place and help humanity to accelerate consciousness consciously, and also to leave our positive mark upon the world. I would say, have you been feeling the call to change and yet something's holding you back? Or what's keeping you from choosing a new path today? How can you best support yourselves as they shift into the best version of themselves? Just checking. What new potentials lie ahead of you? And so, yeah, tune into that. I'm going to scribe. I just got a download. Okay, don't mind me. <laughs> okay, fantastic Friday. Are you loving the colors of these cards? I just want to say this is like with one step ahead is all we need. Baby steps. I like the triangles going to the east. So just being mindful of our heart, what our heart loves, and do we understand where we belong in all of this? What are we law of attracting through our thoughts? Do we love what we think? Do our thoughts belong? Like sometimes, you know, I don't feel like I belong anywhere. And then I go through that a lot. Yeah, the 41 just saying. So 1% better each day, baby steps. That's kind of what this reminds me of. Determination, perseverance, moving forward, progress, sharing, sharing our knowledge, something we've learned, leading, being on the edge of thoughts with our leading, leading on the edge of our thoughts, building on our existing skills. It's kind of a message that maybe we're worrying about expert status, you know, the status quo. Maybe we're being impatient. Maybe we're not enjoying the journey here. Maybe there's this feeling of unwarranted doubt and failure, insecurities, lack of direction or focus, taking on too much, doing things too quickly. 
So on Friday, it's actually a message to really take one small step. It reminds me, one small step for mankind. Sometimes we worry about not making it, not making the cut to our final destiny fast enough, not building our content quickly enough, or not being expert enough the moment we begin. So that pattern of not enough, it really is a message to really <laughs> let that shift go because one step ahead is really all we need, Buttercup. Even, even overnight success happens in stages. So learn to revel in lifelong learning and stepping, stepping into your authenticity. Trust those who's walked the path before you who knew that the journey was more important than the final destination. Whether, whether you are moving towards adding new skills to your own toolkit or spiritual exercises, rituals towards a giant dream that you've started to kind of envision, whatever that is, that you're kind of building, creating, choreographing, determination and perseverance are really like, you have to adopt this galactic mindset, seriously. But the message here is also suggesting that we are 100% worthy of sharing any steps that we've learned with others, even if we've just learned them recently. It might open their eyes, you know, choreographing a new dream. And if that doesn't sound like music to your soul, maybe it's time to start logging your steps, logging your messages, your progress, to really remind yourself how far you've actually come, journeyed forward. I always go sideways because I forget. Anyway, so when you string them all together, lasso them all in, they become marathons of one step in front of the other. And the rhythm, the beat, the heartbeat that they actually create is your divine dance towards expansion. So one inspired step at a time. How would you like to inspire others? Like, what is that divine connection? I really like... I want to change people's stars. I really want them to see the star that they are. I love seeing people be in their medicine. It's really, it's fascinating to me. It's like, wow, they are in their light. Or how can you express your own creative optimism? Is there something that you've been pushing too hard for or something that would benefit from, or someone, someone, look, or somebody who would benefit more of your focus, you know, we can put it somewhere. So when you tune in, what's the next step going to be? That's kind of like tuning into your own magic here. Uh, welcome to the first week of the season of the sun. The full moon should be up soon, the musing moon meditation. Forgot to mention that. Be sure to tune in, share with your friends. But an affirmation for this week is I would just be... I am loving the skin that I am in and I am embodying my own personal self-love. Do so like a witcher. Um, Ashe, blessings. I'll see you on the other side. I felt like that was a lot, but thanks for tuning in. Either way, Ashe, thank you. Blessings. Yeah, and art's very important because that's an expression of like what you said of what's on the inside. And we need to cultivate that. We live in a society that's very logic-based, which is okay. I, I'm very grounded in the logic. I like to have proof behind what's there. But I also have an understanding of you know, the spirit and divine and the, the creativity. And it really is a balance of both of them. Because if you're too in the spirit, life's aloof, maybe you don't pay the bills and you become disconnected with this physical world. Like I said, we're incarnating in these physical bodies and 